Hello everybody, it's Kate of the Library of Whispers and today I have um, a little giveaway. It's the 1st of May and I thought this seemed like a nice idea. Um, you'll find out more about how to actually get hold of the things that I'm going to give away at the end of the video. So, I'm going to take a read of the Bronte Parsonage Museum Book of Days and this is the lovely book that I'd like to give away. It's kind of like a diary. I think if you've looked at some of my other videos you'll have seen. It has some nice information and lovely pictures. All about the Brontes. And because this is also going to be a tea making and tea drinking video, I thought you might be interested in also receiving some of these teas. They are from Wittard of Chelsea, which apparently was established in 1886. We have Tipia Sam, English Breakfast, Earl Grey, Afternoon Tea, English Rose, Jasmine, Marrakesh Mint, and Mango and Bergamot. And today I'm going to have Marrakesh Mint. So, to move these to one side. We have this lovely book, which can be yours. Um, if you take a look at how to get it at the end. Okay. More importantly, some tea. Okay. You can smell that minty flavour as soon as I've opened the package. So this is a flavoured green tea and it says compounder, compounder green tea with peppermint leaves, the traditional taste of the Marrakesh Medina. And it's a kind of greeny, yellowy kind of tea not quite as golden as some of the other teas that I've had, but I think it's because of the, the peppermint. And those of you that have seen my other videos where I drink and make tea will know that I don't really like a strong cup of tea. I much prefer a little, something a little bit weaker. I don't like builder's tea, as we say up here. Builder's tea is quite strong, so strong that you could hold the spoon up <laughs> in the tea. <laughs> and it usually has loads of milk as well. So, take the tea back out. There we go. Let's have a taste. Mmm, smells divine. Mm. It's a very, a very mild flavour of mint, of peppermint. I think sometimes these peppermint teas can be a little bit overwhelming in the taste, whereas you can actually taste the tea and the peppermint together, if that makes sense. Mm. It's really delicious. 
been nice to have today. We haven't had very good weather this weekend. So that's very delicious. So now I'm going to move things out the way and um, I'll read as much of the Bronte Parsonage Museum Book of Days as I can. And then, as I say at the end of the video, um, you'll find out how you can have the book yourself and some of these lovely teas. See you in a minute. So here I am back again and um, still have my tea. And I think we got to July in the last video. July 1st, 1848, the tenant of Wildfell Hall first appeared in the lists of new publications. Above, illustration by E. M. Wimperis from the tenant of Wildfell Hall. 3rd of July, 1850, Charlotte left for a four-day visit to Edinburgh with her publisher, George Smith and his sister. 4th of July, 1854, Charlotte and Arthur Bell Nichols called from Anglesey to Dublin for a two-day visit as part of their honeymoon. 7th of July, 1848, Charlotte and Anne travelled to London to see their publishers and prove that the Bells were not a single author. 8th of July, 1848, Charlotte and Anne visited Smith, Elder and Co, the publishers of Jane Eyre. Charlotte met George Smith and William Smith Williams for the first time. 10th of July, 1809. Monsieur Heger, the original of Paul Emmanuel in Villette, was born in Brussels. 12th of July, 1839. Emily wrote her poem. And now the house dog stretched once more, containing a possible prototype of Heathcliff. And this here picture is right, coloured print of St. Gudula, Brussels. And this picture here is George Smith of Smith Elder and Co. as a young man. And this picture is bottom right, William Smith Williams the reader at Smith Elder and Co. And here are the signatures of Curra, Ellis and Acton Bell. Thirteenth of July eighteen oh eight Madame Moiselle Heger, the original of Madame Beck in Villette, was born. Fifteenth of july eighteen forty seven. Charlotte sent the manuscript of the Professor to Smith, Elder and Co. 16th of July, 1841. Emily wrote her poem. Aye, there it is. It wakes tonight. A universal influence from thine own influence free. A principle of life intense, lost to mortality. I'm just going to have some tea. Seventeenth of July, eighteen forty five, Branwell received his dismissal from Mr. Robinson. And here, above, is a portrait of Ellen Lussie as a young woman. And this is manuscript of Branwell's poem to Mrs. Robinson, Lydia Gisborne. Nineteenth of July, eighteen thirty three. Helen Lussie first visited the parsonage. 20th of July, 1810, Patrick was formally licensed to Hartshead cum Clifton. 21st of July, 1824, Maria and Elizabeth were taken to the clergy daughter's school 
That's Cowan Bridge. Uh, 23rd of July, 1855, Mrs. Gaskell and Catherine Winkworth visited Patrick to discuss Charlotte's biography. 24th of July, 1845, Mary Taylor arrived in Wellington, New Zealand. And this picture here is engraving of the clergy daughter school at Cowan Bridge. And this picture here below, part of a letter from Mary Taylor to Charlotte, 10th of April, 1845. Twenty-eighth of July, eighteen fifty-six, Haworth churchyard was formally closed for burials on health grounds. Twenty-ninth of July, eighteen fifty, sorry, eighteen thirty-five, Charlotte returned to Roe Head as a teacher, accompanied by Emily. Thirtieth of July, eighteen eighteen, Emily was born at Thornton. Thirty-first of July. 1845, Anne wrote her diary paper, having resigned her post as governess at Thorpe Green. I, for my part, cannot well be flatter or older in mind than I am now. And this picture is Haworth Old Church and Churchyard, circa 1860. And now we're on to August. First of August, 1854, Charlotte and Arthur Bell Nichols returned home from their honeymoon in Ireland. Third of August, 1830, Charlotte compiled her catalogue of my books. Fourth of August, 1928, the Bronte Parsonage Museum was opened to the public, and the title deeds presented to the Bronte Society by Sir James Roberts. 7th of August, 1837, Emily wrote her poem, O oh God of Heaven, The Dream of Horror. 10th of August, 1824, Charlotte was taken to the Clergy Daughters School by Patrick. 11th of August, 1842, Emily wrote her essay, The Papillon for Monsieur Hedger. And this picture here is the opening of the Bronte Parsonage Museum. Sir Edward Brotherton is on the left with Sir James and Lady Roberts. Below, thousands turned out to see the opening of the museum in 1928. Wow. And this one, below, the Reverend William Carus Wilson, founder of the Clergy Daughters School. Fourteenth of August, eighteen forty-two, William Waitman performed his last duty as curate in Haworth. Nineteenth of August, eighteen fifty, Charlotte arrived at Briary Close to spend a week with the K. Shuttleworths, and met Mrs. Gaskell for the first time. And this picture here is Briary Close, the summer residence of Sir James and Lady K. Shuttleworth at Windermere. 20th of August, 1846, Patrick and Charlotte moved into lodgings at 83 Mount Pleasant, Manchester, where Charlotte began writing Jane Eyre. 22nd of August, 1830, Charlotte wrote A Day at Perry's Palace and her poem Morning. 24th of August, 1847, Charlotte sent the manuscript of Jane Eyre to Smith, Elder and Co. 25th of August, 1864, Arthur Bell Nichols married his cousin Mary Ann Bell as his second wife. And this picture is Charlotte's early writing 
a day at Paris Palace. And this is part of the first page of Charlotte's original manuscript of Jane Eyre. Twenty-sixth of August, eighteen twelve, Maria Branwell wrote her first letter to Patrick, having agreed to become his wife. Twenty-eighth of August, eighteen forty, Anne wrote her poem Appeal. Twenty-ninth of August, eighteen twenty-eight, Anne signed her pencil drawing Church surrounded by trees, which is here. Thirty-first of August. August 1840, Branwell's appointment as assistant clerk at Sowerby Bridge Station was confirmed. And now we're on to September. And now we'll have some tea. Second of September, 1825, Crow Hill Bog first on the Haworth Moors. 3rd of September 1844, Emily wrote her poem, To Imagination. So hopeless is the world without, the world within I doubly prize. 6th of September 1842, William Whiteman died in Haworth of cholera, aged 26. And this uh, here is a Memorial in Haworth Church to the Reverend William Waitman, the curate, curate of Haworth. And the 8th of September, 1849, James Taylor from Smith, Elder and Co. arrived at the parsonage to collect the manuscript off for Shirley. 9th of September, 1824, Patrick's account of the Crow Hill Bog Burst was published in the Leeds Intelligencer. 10th of September, 1845, Branwell drew his ink sketches, Bendigo, taking a sight, alas, poor Count, and a cast down, but not cast away, in a letter to Leyland. 11th of September, 1837, Elizabeth Franks, Nee Firth, Patrick's friend and godmother to Elizabeth and Anne, died in Bradford. 12th of September, 1847, Charlotte accepted Smith, Elder and Co's terms for the publication of Jane Eyre. And this picture here is a 19th century view of Haworth. And this one is Bramwell's ink drawing from a letter to Joseph Bentley Leyland. Fourteenth of September, eighteen fifty-two. The Duke of Wellington, Charlotte's hero, died. Fifteenth of September, eighteen twenty-one. Maria Bronte, another of the Bronte children, died in Haworth, aged thirty-eight. Seventeenth of September, eighteen sixty-one. Arthur Bell Nichols signed the Haworth Church registers for the last time. 19th of September, 1850, Charlotte wrote the biographical note, notice of Ellis and Acton Bell. And here is Charlotte's portrait, painted when she was 14 years old, of her mother. 20th of September, 1846. Arthur Bell Nichols was ordained priest by the Lord Bishop of Ripon. 23rd of September, 1829, Charlotte wrote her first extant letter to her father while staying with Aunt Branwell and her brother and sisters at their uncle John Fennell's parsonage at Todd Morden for three days. 24th of September, 1848, Branwell died in Haworth, probably of tuberculosis, aged 31. And this picture is Charlotte's letter to her father from the parsonage at Todd Morden. And this picture here is a parody 
Bramwell's last surviving drawing showing himself being summoned from sleep by death. Gosh, it's quite morbid. <laughs> And 29th of September, 1841, Charlotte applied to Aunt Branwell for a loan so that she and, he she and Emily could study abroad. 30th of September, 1839, Emily wrote her poem, The Organ Swells, The Trumpets Sound. And this here is a silhouette portrait of Aunt Branwell. Oh, that looks bleak, doesn't it? Some more tea. First of October, eighteen sixty-one, the auction of the parsonage con contents began. In eight, 485 lots. 18, sorry, 3rd of October 1802. Patrick entered St. John's College, Cambridge. 4th of October 1847. Charlotte wrote the first of her many letters to William Smith Williams. 6th of October 1841. Emily signed her pencil drawing, Woman's Head, with a tiara. And this picture is catalogue for the sale at Howarth Parsonage, held on 1st and 2nd of October 1861. 9th of October 1845, Emily wrote her long poem, Julian M. and A.G. Rochelle, Silent is the house, all are laid asleep. 10th of October 1832, Charlotte signed her ink and watercolour drawing. Kirksall Abbey among trees. 12th of October 1842, Martha Taylor died of cholera in Brussels. Fourteenth of October eighteen thirty four, Charlotte finished My Angria and the Angrians. 15th of October 1833, Charlotte signed her pencil drawings, Zenobia, Marchioness, Elvington, Elvington, Arthur, Adrian, Marquis of Dora, and Alexander, Salt. 16th of October 1842, Charlotte wrote her essay, La Pelle de la Morte, for Monsieur Hegeur. 17th of October 1843, Charlotte wrote, Letter d'un pauvre peintre et un grand signor, her last surviving essay for a Monsieur Hegeur. Sorry about the pronunciation. 18th of October 1842, Emily wrote her essay, Matthieu, Le Palais de la Morte, for Monsieur Hegeur. And this picture is title page of the first edition of Jane Eyre, published in October 1847. And this picture is manuscript entitled Blah 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 in French <laughs> by Emily. Mathieu La Palais de la Morte. Okay, I'm going to have a bit more tea. Nineteenth of October, eighteen forty-seven, Jane Eyre published by Smith, Elder and Co. Twenty-third of October, eighteen thirty-three, Branwell began the politics of Verdopolis. And this picture is Charlotte's watercolor study of fruit. Sixth of October, eighteen forty-nine, Shirley published by Smith, Elder and Co. Twenty-seventh of October, eighteen forty-one, Emily signed her watercolor of her pet Merlin, Nero. 
which is here, and these portrait of her pet Merlin Hawk. 29th of October 1842, and Branwell died in Haworth, aged 66. 30th of October 1859, Patrick preached his last sermon at Haworth Church. 31st of October 1843, Anne wrote her poem, The Captive Dove. And this picture is title page of the first edition of Shirley, published in 1849, November. First of November, 1838, Emily wrote her poem, uh, E. de Samara, to AGA, light up thy halls, tis closing day. 2nd of November, 1842, news of Aunt Branwell's first illness reached Charlotte and Emily in Brussels. 5th of November, bonfire night, 1842. Monsieur Hedger wrote to Patrick urging him to let Charlotte and Emily return to Brussels. 6th of November, 1842, Charlotte and Emily sailed from Antwerp to England. 7th of November, 1848, Charlotte wrote her first letter to George Smith. And this drawing is Drawing of a Fir Tree by Emily, circa 1842. 8th of November, 1848, Lydia Robinson married Sir Edward Dolman Scott. 10th of November, 1842, Anne wrote her poem to Cowper. The language of my inmost heart I traced in every line. My sins, my sorrows, hopes and fears were there and only mine. 11th of November, 1838, Emily wrote her poem, Loud without the wind was roaring, and sometime the loved and the loving shall meet on the mountains again. And this picture is Bardillon Illustrated Manuscript by Branwell, 15th of November 1833. And this picture is Emily's 1845 diary paper sketch showing herself writing in her bedroom with her devoted mastiff keeper lying at her feet. A bit more tea. Thirteenth of November, eighteen thirty nine, Anne signed her pencil drawing woman gazing at a sunrise over a seascape. 14th of November, 1829, Patrick's letter calling for the abolition of the death penalty except for murder was published in the Leeds Mercury. 15th of November, 1837, Anne signed her pencil drawing portrait of a child's head. 17th of November, 1834, Branwell was appointed secretary at the inaugural meeting of the Haworth Temperance Society. 18th of November, 1845, Charlotte wrote her last surviving letter to Monsieur Hedger. And this picture is Anne's drawing, woman gazing at a sunrise over a seascape. 20th of November, 1852, Charlotte sent the final volume of Villette to her publishers. 22nd of November 1819, the Leeds Intelligencer reported on the protests against the new court curate. Scenes scarcely possible in a heathen village have been witnessed on three successive Sundays in the Church of Haworth. 24th of November 1834, Emily and Anne wrote that their diary paper the kitchen is in Avery is, is sorry. The kitchen is in every untidy state. Tabby said on my putting a pen in her face, you are pitter pottering there instead of piling peeling a potato. <laughs> I think. <laughs> and here right is 
In one of her misspelt diary frog fragments dated 24th of November 1834, Emily described a lively scene in the parsonage kitchen. Below, one of a set of jugs from the Bronte household showing scenes from the Pilgrim's Progress. November 1824, Emily was taken to school at Cowan Bridge by Patrick. 26th of November 1897, Ellen Nussie died aged 80. 27th of November 1853, Charlotte dated her unfinished novel, Emma. 28th of November 1768, Maria's mother and father, Anne Kahn and Thomas Branwell married. 29th of November 1849, Charlotte travelled by train to London to stay with her publisher, George Smith, and his mother in Paddington. And this picture is Ellen Nussie in later life, and this below is a lithograph showing Cornhill in London, where the offices of Smith, Elder and Co. were situated. And finally, December. Snowy scene. First of December eighteen fifty one. Keeper died at the parsonage. December the second, nineteen oh six. Arthur Bell Nichols died in Banha, aged eighty eight. Fourth of December eighteen forty nine. Charlotte met Thackeray for the first time at dinner at George Smith's house. 5th of December, 1809, Patrick arrived in Dewsbury to begin curacy. And this picture is the Reverend Arthur Bell Nichols. And this picture is Keeper's Brass Collar. 7th of December, 1835, Branwell wrote to Blackwood's magazine offering his services. 9th of December, 1849, Charlotte visited Harriet Martineau at her cousin's house in London. 10th of December, 1853, Charlotte wrote two curt lines to George Smith to congratulate him on his engagement. By the 12th of December, 1841, Charlotte wrote her poem, Passion, Some Have Worn a Wild Delight by Daring Wilder Sorrow. 13th of December 1836, Emily wrote her poem, High Waving Heather, Neath Stormy Blasts Bending. And this picture is a manuscript of Emily's poem, High Waving Heather. Fourteenth of December eighteen forty seven. Emily and Anne received six copies of Wuthering Heights and Agnes Grey from their publishers. 15th of December 1830, Branwell began the history of the young men. 16th of December 1893, the Bronte Society was founded in Bradford. 18th of December 1838, Emily wrote her poem, The Bluebell. 19th of December 1848, Emily died in Haworth of tuberculosis, aged 30. And here on the right is title page of the first edition of Agnes Grey and Wuthering Heights. And this is a notice circulated in December 1893, which led to the formation of the Bronte Society. 20th of December, 1845. Bramwell's poem, uh, Pen Ma Mawa, Pen Main Mawa, was published in the Halifax Guardian. 21st of December 1807, Patrick was ordained in the Chapel Royal of St. James. 22nd of December 1848, Emily's funeral service was conducted by Arthur Bell Nichols. 24th of December 1841, Charlotte returned home from the White family where she had been governess prior to travelling to Brussels. 25th of December 1838, Bramwell played the organ in Haworth Church 
for the Masonic Christmas service. And this picture here is Patrick as a young man. And this picture is the black horsehair sofa made by William Wood for the Bronte family, on which Emily Bronte is said to have died. Twenty eighth of december eighteen forty, Joshua Taylor, the original of Mr York in Shirley, father of Mary and Martha Taylor, died. Twenty ninth of december eighteen twelve, Patrick Bronte married Maria Bramwell at Guiseley Church near Leeds. Thirtieth of december eighteen forty seven, Hans Poem, The Narrow Way, Believe Not Those Who Say the Upward Path is Smooth was published in the Leeds Intelligencer. And this picture here is Watercolour of Pink Begonia by Charlotte. And this is Maria Bramwell's Letter to Patrick, 18th of November 1812, beginning My Dear Saucy Pat. And that's the end. So. If you would like this book of days and some teas, then keep watching for the final part of the video. So welcome back everybody and this is the giveaway part of the video and um, as I said at the beginning um, now that I've finished reading the Bronte Parsonage Museum Book of Days, I'd like to give this away to somebody. And I also thought it would be a nice idea if you would like a collection of the teas that I've been drinking. Um, just one, one sachet of each. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight teas as well, which is um, so Marrakesh Mint, Earl Grey, Gypsy Sap, Mango and Bergamot, Jasmine, English Rose, English breakfast and afternoon tea and these are um, Wittards of Chelsea which uh, apparently was established in 1886 so if you would like to receive these lovely teas in the post And this lovely Bronte Parsonage Museum Book of Days, which is essentially a diary, but it's a, a universal diary, I suppose. I think it's just nice to have anyway because the pictures are very nice. Anyway, if you would like to receive these as a as a thank you for um, the, the growing success of my channel and as a thank you to everybody who has um, been a friend and made some lovely comments um, on, on the different videos that I've made then please send your name and address somewhere that I can post this to if you go onto my website, in my website, which is, let me see if I can remember this, www.libraryofwhispers.com and I have a little contact page that you can say that you would like to receive these things. And then what I will do, if you obviously you pop your name and address on there as well, and I will take all the names and um, take an, out a name at random and I don't really mind where you're from 
I'll try and post this to, <laughs> to wherever you are in the world. That's not a problem. And so I think to give everybody a fair chance to see the video and to get a chance to send information to me, I think if we have a cut-off date of the end of May, so um, by the 31st of May, and then after that I will pick out a name and address and pop these in the post to you. I hope you enjoyed this video and um, I'll, put, I'll put details in the description below. This is Kate saying bye bye for now.